look, a hole in a rock. Dylan here with The Seasoned Bikepacker, where I share unbiased reviews, tips, tricks, and general information about bikepacking gear, routes, and strategies. I'm excited to share with you a route I've created that stitches together some segments from some excellent courses I've written. I'll give you a preview of the route, a little history of the area, some fun facts, and show you everything you need to know to be prepared and have a great ride. The GPS file with waypoints are in the description below and here, along with all the other important links. If you have questions or like the route, let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, share, all the usual stuff. A little disclaimer, this is an unofficial bikepacking route. Ride and camp at your own risk. Always follow prohibited camping and fire signage. Pack it in, pack it out, and yield to hikers and horses and be polite. Don't be an asshole. A bike bell is highly recommended for the busy sections in Sedona. Hikers have told me on multiple occasions Ooh. that they really, really appreciate the bell. I've been using this timber bell, which has an on and off switch and two levels of loudness. I'm a huge fan of this bell and suggest getting one with the O-ring style mounting instead of the full clamp on. I've killed a couple bells by hitting it with my knee and breaking the clamp. This O-ring style has enough give that if you smash into it, it'll survive. Now I wish I had an epic story about how I almost got bit by two snakes on this route or how the twin snakes are a symbolic representation of the two towns on the route. But no, I was scouting this route with a friend and we bought these gummy snacks called twin snakes. One is sweet and one is sour. Perhaps you could get philosophical about that, but I'll leave that up to you. The Twin Snakes Winding Figure Eight Loop connects two historic cities in the Southwest and links together sections of the Coconino Stage Bike Pack, Robber's Roost, and the Arizona Endurance Series Big Friggin' Loop. It has a diverse mixture of technical, world-famous single track, gravel, Jeep roads, and awe-inspiring scenery. The route is 86 miles with 7,000 feet of elevation gain and can be completed comfortably in two days by advanced bikepackers and three days for intermediate or beginner bikepackers. If you're a savage, you can likely do it in one day without camping gear. The ideal time of year to ride is late fall and early spring, but it can be ridden in winter months with the appropriate cold weather gear, with the potential for overnight temperatures to get in the low 20s and 30s. I rode it in the final days of December and daytime temps were perfect and nights in the low 40s. Stay mindful of Arizona's monsoon season in July and August. The rain can arrive quickly and be torrential. What bike to ride? A mountain bike is definitely recommended. Hardtail or short travel full suspension. Sedona single track is challenging terrain and slow going even for advanced mountain bikers. For parking, your best option is to park at the Bell Rock parking lot and purchase a $5 per day Red Rock Pass, which you can order online. Link here and in the description below. Parking can be challenging here if you arrive after 9 a.m., so best to get here early. The course starts and ends near a bike and bean, bike, coffee shop combo, Thai food place, and a pizza place. So it's everything you need for the beginning and end of a proper bikepacking trip. An important note, this route goes through Red Rock State Park, so bring some extra cash for the self-pay station. The cost at the time of this video is $7 for adults, but check the website first for any updates and bring exact cash since change is not available. A quick note on camping. As of September 1st, 2022, the U.S. Forest Service has restricted many of the camping sites previously available on this route due to squatters in the West Sedona area. I'll put a link to the forest order in the description below and try to keep the Ride with GPS track as up-to-date as possible. Make sure to review all Forest Service camp enclosures before planning your ride and camp only in permitted areas. Fun fact, the town of Sedona was named after early settlers to the area TC and his wife Sedona Schnebley. When residents of the small settlement complained to TC about slow and infrequent mail service, he immediately filed for an application for the establishment of a post office. Various reports indicate that TC suggested calling the post office Schnebley Station, then Red Rock Crossing, and even Oak Creek Station. And most of these reports state that the names were not accepted by the government because they were too long to fit on a cancellation stamp. Subsequently, TC's brother, Dorsey Ellsworth, thought of submitting the name of TC's wife, Sedona. After telling TC there was a character that would stand well as a symbol for the community, he turned to Sedona and said, you're going to have a town named after you. Grab any last minute supplies and an espresso at the Bike and Bean before you head out and kick off the route on some intermediate single track trails, including Slim Shady and Templeton. 
Be sure to take a quick snack or meditation break at the world famous Cathedral Rock Vortex. Every once in a while you'll see climbers up there, scaling the side of it. The saddle between the two spires is one of Sedona's most popular combination vortices. According to the locals, a vortex is an interdimensional flow of increased key energy, which enhances the life force energy of those that take the time to connect with these sites. The vortex sites of Sedona are major flows of earth energy, which can be utilized for healing, increased creativity, transformation, manifestation, inspiration, and insight. I hope your energy is flowing for this next part. Buckle up and drop down a rowdy exposed descent to Buda Beach at Oak Creek. Filter some water if needed, then hop onto Baldwin Trail and follow a maze of single track into the back door of Red Rock State Park. Don't forget to stop at the self-pay station and drop your money. You'll enter Red Rock State Park and cross Oak Creek via a long footbridge, which is also a great photo op. Continue rolling and you'll hit your first water resupply and bathroom stop. If you catch them during open hours, you can buy sodas from the visitor center. You'll depart Red Rock State Park and cross Upper Red Rock Loop Road and begin a brief hike-a-bike section on Lime Kiln Trail. Meander on a mix of single track and two track, then cross under Highway 89A and continue on. Keep an eye on your GPS this next section as the trail gets a little tricky in a few spots. Cross the dusty Bill Gray Road and bomb down the fast and flowy single track, but don't forget to stop and have a look at the famous town of Jerome off in the distance and check out the Lime Kiln which is the trail's namesake. This feature was constructed during the mid 1880s to burn limestone to create lime for the mortar used for the construction of the nearby historic houses. Roll through Dead Horse State Park and get some well-deserved calories in Cottonwood. Dead Horse was named by the buyer's children because of a dead horse laying in the middle of a field when it was first purchased. Initially, the area around Cottonwood was occupied by the Sanawa people who built their homes in the cliffs on the mountains. In the mid 18th century, just like in many other locations in Arizona, this area saw an influx of miners. In the 1870s, several families from the Midwest moved here and the community was growing further. One of the new residents was Charles D. Willard. He moved to the area together with his family. It was him who suggested naming the settlement Cottonwood after a circle of 16 huge cottonwoods growing not so far from the settlement. Be sure to fill up on calories and water since the next guaranteed resupply is 42 miles of hard riding. There are options in downtown Cottonwood, just off the route, and a gas station on the way through town on the route. The Verde Valley Bicycle Company is also on route if you need any supplies or quick repairs. Head out of Cottonwood with full bellies and settle in for a grind up gravel and two track as Bill Gray Road slowly ascends to close the bottom loop of this route. As mentioned before, with the recent camping restrictions, finding an allowed camping spot can be a little tricky. I'll be sure to make updates and try to keep the Ride With GPS route updated on this front. Continue heading northwest as great views open up of Sycamore Canyon Wilderness to the northwest, Kasner Mountain to the north, and Sedona to the east. Climb, climb, climb as you close in on the highest point on the route at 5,000 feet, splitting off to head to Robber's Roost parking area. Hideout, or Shaman's Cave, is located on the southeast side of Robber's Roost Butte, named because allegedly bootleggers, rustlers, and robbers would steal cattle and other animals and hide here. A small, rounded window on the south side of the hideout cave is where the thieves would supposedly look out to see if the ranchers were chasing them. Now there isn't camping permitted at the hideout cave or in the parking lot, and it's wilderness area on both sides of this narrow road. So this is a good opportunity for a snack break. Stash your bikes and make the quick and slightly perilous hike out to the cave. Be sure to bring your camera and bike shoes with some good grip. Don't underestimate the mileage of this next section. You may look at the mileage on paper and think, no problem, I'll be done by brunch. But you have to factor in the Sedona ratio of one to 1.75. A 40 mile effort will feel like 70 miles due to the technical riding, constant up and down, and stopping for hikers and horses. This tank is full. Maybe you'll catch a glimpse of the rising hot air balloons in the distance as you bounce on rough two track towards the northernmost part of this loop and arrive at the Hananki Heritage Site cliff dwellings and rock art. There are trash cans, benches, and pit toilets at Hananki. The site is open 9.30 to 3, seven days a week. Hononki and its sister site, Palatki, were the largest cliff dwellings of the Red Rock country between AD 1150 
in 1350. The Sanawa people, ancestors of the Hopi, lived here preparing meals, raising their families, and making tools from stone, leather, and wood. Nearby, they hunted for deer and rabbit, tended various crops, and gathered edible wild plants. They were first described by Dr. Jesse Walter Fucus, a famous turn-of-the-century archaeologist from the Smithsonian Institute, who gave them the Hopi names of Honanki, which means badger house, and Palatki, which means red house. The Hopi, however, have no specific names for these sites. You'll hop on the last stretch of gravel for a bit of easy cruising and head towards town. Am I good to pass? Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, nice landing. <laughs> then off on Airy Trail to begin the most demanding single track parts of the course. Catch some great views and unusual terrain on Mescal Trail, then navigate the hikers on Chuck Wagon, finally reaching the pavement at the end of Lizard Trail. You'll cruise down some pavement and have an opportunity for some food resupply just off the route. Have an easy pedal through a neighborhood and hop onto the Adobe Jack Trail system, winding across Thunder Mountain, Andante, Teacup. There it is, my favorite knob tree. Pumpkinhead. Jordan, and finally reaching the next viewpoint at Devil's Kitchen Sinkhole. Said to have initially caved in in the early 1880s, the Devil's Kitchen Sinkhole is a popular tourist attraction and worth a stop. In late 1989, a second historic collapse event occurred at Devil's Kitchen, enlarging the opening by as much as one-third. The 1989 event was largely limited to the north wall, where a gigantic block detached along with three bounding walls from its cap rock. Edges of the newly broken rock are highly angular, and the surface soil has not yet begun to slough off. Now for some fun. Continue on Jordan, then rip down Powerline Plunge and connect up with Adobe Jack as you near the 89A crossing. Some nice pools there, drinkable water. Look for a trail leading to some large drainage tunnels under the road, which will shoot you out near more resupply options in town. My personal favorite is the crispy tripo burrito from Filiberto's. It's kind of a secret menu item, so you have to ask for it if they have it. Some more easy road cruising as you pass through some roundabouts and by Talakapaki. To preserve the integrity of the site, buildings were constructed around existing trees. Where possible, methods of construction mirrored those of Mexican artisans and builders. Tiles, statuary, lanterns, pots, doors, wrought iron, and fountains were largely imported piece by piece from Mexico. The result is a unique blend of architecture and nature. Head east on Morgan Road until you hit the Broken Arrow trail system and try to beat the Jeeps and 4x4s up Broken Arrow. Fun fact, the trail is named after a 19 1950s movie starring Jimmy Stewart, which had some scenes filmed in this area. At the top of the climb, you'll find some of the most stunning views in Sedona, looking down into the canyon from what the 4x4s call Chicken Point. Perhaps you'll witness some mountain bikers with damaged amygdalas attempting the famous white line. After photo op time, keep them wheels on the ground as you descend Little Horse Trail to Llama. You'll connect back up with the very popular Bell Rock Pathway, then cross under the highway and reconnect with the start of the route. Finish off with a fun descent back into the village of Oak Creek. Well, I hope you have an opportunity to bikepack this route and be embedded in one of the most majestic places in the Southwest. Links are in the description below, and if you find this helpful, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thanks for watching, and remember to plan, pack, and pedal.